Welcome into the Believe in Steelers show. I'm Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion in Pittsburgh Steelers scout, Ike Taylor, swagging you. It is wonderful to see you, Ike. We have a loaded show on this Wednesday. Steelers on a three-game losing streak, trying to get right against the Bengals in week 16. Ike, it is good to see you this morning, my man. Man, it's been a long time coming. Been in Pittsburgh for the past two weeks. Uh, been talking to you off and on. So I'm just glad to be back on the show, Mark. So I'm going to let you set this thing off. Absolutely. And Ike, the last time we were on together, we had Dave Damashek on for our 300th episode. Thank you to Dave. And if you enjoyed that interview, give him a shout out on social media. Always good chopping it up with him. And it's like getting the band back together, right? Because I know you worked with Dave at the NFL Network. So. Right, right. Um, nah, you, know, you, know, you know Shaq, man. Shaq's something different, man. We always have a good time. Was Shaq, Shaq got on, on our 300, 300 show, correct? Was that 300 for us? 300, so, but, just like yeah, the movie. So, yeah, so what a coincidence. So big shout out to Shaq for coming on the show, Dave. Dumb Shaq for coming on the show, man. Shaq always have a, a Yenzer insight, so it's always fun when he on. So. Great check to talk to him, and he's the host of the Minus 3 podcast. You can check that out there. Uh, Ike, before we get too far along with today's show, let's tell our listeners and viewers about our presenting sponsor, and that's betonline.ag. NFL Week 16 is here. If you want to place a bet on any of the action, spreads, player props, over-unders, betonline.ag is the place to do it. 365, 24-7, regardless of what sport it is, make sure y'all check on betonline.ag. You can use our promo code BELIEF, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Ike, uh, Mason Rudolph is going to be the starter for the Steelers if Kenny Pickett can't go. Uh, Mitch Trubisky binged. He ultimately is going to be judged by his wins and losses. He's 2-5 and as a Steelers starting quarterback. He has yet to throw for 200 yards in a game this season with the Steelers. And that Saturday game against the Colts, it just, I know if you look on paper and the box score, it might say one thing, but this Steelers offense is just really, really struggle. And the offense came out, out of the gate, a 13 to nothing lead. And then the Steelers allow 30 consecutive points. It could have been 36, uh, if not for missed field goals, but uh, Steelers are reeling a bit right now uh, in the post-Matt Canada world. And Ike, you said this several weeks back when Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan took over his play caller and interim OC. You say, let me see what this looks like after several games. And the Steelers offense just still struggling right now to move the football and to put points on the scoreboard. Yeah, just as a whole, we're just struggling, especially on the offensive side. Um, I, I don't know how tough it is, you know, just having a – like two OCs, so say, you know, but they still trying to figure it out. So it's, you're, we're just getting a sample size, but for us, I just think it's, you know, too much inconsistency, you know, um, in play on the field. So you give me a sample size in the first quarter, second quarter, um, what can possibly the offense look like then from that point on, you know, you got to understand teams going to adjust, so we got to readjust too as well. So um, it, it's just, I'm going I'm to tell you like this, it's just hard to watch. It's hard, to, it's hard, it's hard to watch, especially on the offensive side, Mark. So, um, I mean, the crazy thing is, like, even though we're three games out of it, uh, we got to hit these three and we'll have opportunity, but the offense, uh, for sure, um, from a coaching staff, from a player's point of view, it's frustrating to watch. Uh, the frustrating side of it is the inconsistency of play. The frustrating side of it is the not having identity on the offensive side. The frustrating side is you see clips of us to who we could be, and we're not that consistently. The frustrating side of it is finding ways for guys and putting them in position to make plays and get open. The frustrating side of it is seeing the talent, seeing the players we have, um, not making plays consistently. So 
it's just frustrating because when you look at the roster on the offensive side, Mark, it's a lot of talent. And there is no way we should be putting up at least 24 points, at least 24 points a game. But it's just a lot of inconsistency um, right now on that side of the ball. The Steelers have failed to score 19 points in the past five games. That's the longest said streak since they went six games in a row in the 1969 season. And that was Chuck Knoll's first season, Ike. So that kind of puts into history and some context of the struggles of the offense. Now, the words that I hear, Ike, is identity and consistency. Those are the two words that stick out to me from what you're saying to where we're at at this point in the season. And Mike Tomlin even said it on Monday. I, I forget the exact quote, but it was essentially along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing here, Okay. We're making September mis September mistakes, and it's December football. And again, it goes back to lack of I offensive identity and lack of consistently making plays. Like, man, we're talking about. I mean, when Coach T said we're doing September stuff in December, you know, like he like to say that's JV. We still doing JV stuff in December. Um, and when you do that in December. You don't put yourself, you're in a position you're in right now. We're in a position we're in right now. Um, September ball is right out the training camp ball. September ball is um, mistakes. September ball is like cleaning up. September ball is like the first day on the job, kind of. You know, when you when you talk about September, September ball, you got a new job, you're just trying to fill your way out. Heck, when you've been on the job for five or six months, you pretty much understand the routine. Now you're just maneuvering the way you need to maneuver. That's December ball. We're not playing December ball. I mean, Coach T said the best. Right now in December, we're playing September ball. And guys in December, they're playing January ball. It's a difference. So, mm. and, that's, and, and that's consistency <clears throat> from uh, Emmys, mental errors. That's consistency on wearing the line up. That's consistency on penalties. That's consistency on making plays that's consistency on i want to you know so um right now we're just in the funk a deep funk but we we definitely got to get ourselves up out of this funk for sure mason rudolph will have his opportunity ike and he's not started a game since the 2021 season he filled in for one game when ben roethlisberger was out with covid it's funny to me. I almost look at this game like a movie poster, Ike, where if you're trying to sell this game to fans and you had Mason Rudolph on one side of the movie poster and you had Jake Browning on the other, it'd be like, well, how is this a preseason game against division opponents? No, 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 no. We're in a different okay. nexus of the universe because of right. injuries that we've got Mason Rudolph versus Jake Browning uh, in this game at the quarterback position. And here we are, you know, in 2023, where it's like, if you would have told fans this at the start of the season, they'd be like, what happened to get to this point? Yeah, you know, injuries is a part of football, especially that quarterback position. That's a major. We're talking about a starter for the Pittsburgh Look across Steelers. the division, Ike. A starter, yes. A starter for our team, Kenny Pickett, and a starter, Joe Burrow, sitting out for Cincinnati. So that's two. I mean, when you think football, you think quarterback. That's that's the first thing you think. What quarterback you like? After that, you probably go wide receiver. When you just overall think totality, think of football. So, I mean, two two starting quarterbacks not playing, but Mason Rudolph had plenty of time. Mason got plenty of time. He got plenty of snaps, um, and then he he gets another opportunity. Mark, so we shall see. Um, they 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 were screaming free Mason, and Mason <laughs> Mason is free, so we shall see. On Saturday, or on Saturday, because we play on Saturday. Yeah, this um, came full circle, right. like because that 2019 season when Rudolph filled in for Big Ben, and he does have a winning record as a starter, and then he got hurt. Duck Hodges came in. They put right. Mason back in. He then got benched for Hodges. Right. So we'll see how all this shakes out. It's like I hope they put him in an opportunity to succeed when – he came in in that Colts game and they call, call a screen pass to Jalen Warren. It just gets blown up in the backfield. It's like he executed what he needed to on that play in terms of completing the pass, but there's more facets to it than that. 
if the defense knows what's coming, uh, I'll say this. I don't know that it can get much worse than with how Trubisky played. Um, Ike, you know how I feel about that with Trubisky. The Steelers have an out with him in 2024. I would like to see them bring in another quarterback to draft and develop behind Kenny Pickett next season. Uh, mid to late rounds. I, I, again, this is under the assumption whether you have Mike Tomlin or not as your head coach, you're going to have a new OC to try to get Kenny right and try to get this offense right because I almost approach it from this standpoint and I listened back to our conversation with Dave Damashek. I, in 2019, when Ben injured his elbow, shattered his elbow, was done for the season, you knew he was in the latter half, the later portions of his career and it's easy to say, well, Kenny Pickett's just going to be the guy. He'll fill in and be the heir apparent in the post-Ben Roethlisberger era. But this is something that the Steelers offense has really struggled since that 2019 season, by and large, with a large sample size. And so what are the things that you can do to try to get this team right? If Mason Rudolph plays average and plays well, I think you could bring him back on the cheap next year, too, because he has familiarity with the personnel, with the system, and what I hope is a new system next year. Um, but just with Trubisky, if you're paying him uh, $8 million between five and six for the two seasons after this one, if you're paying a premium for the backup, Trubisky is the 28th highest paid quarterback in all of the NFL for this season. You're not getting premium from him as a player at the backup position. So I, I'd move on from him, Mike. That's just my That's just my opinion. You know, that's that's above my pay grade when it comes down to that. I'll let you I'll let you run it and spin it how you want to spin it. But um time time will tell. Time will tell. Um you're on to something, I would say. So I've, I've been mean, banging this drum home mic on this pod for weeks now. No, you be spitting, you be spitting fire, Mark, for real. That's what you be doing. But yeah, that's above my pay grade, so I just leave it like that. I understand. I understand. Um, any chance Pickett does play, Ike? I mean, I, I, I don't know if I could put a number on it. I, I do think it'll be Rudolph, but do you think there's any chance that Pickett comes back early from that tightrope ankle surgery? I hope not, to be honest. I mean, I let's let's rock with Mason. Let's see what Mason can do. Let's see what Mason can do. Uh, let Kenny sit out one more week. One yeah. more week. Just, just one more week, just to just to make sure they'll put it at, you know, seven more days for recovery is a lot, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So let's let's uh let's really it'll be eight because we play on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 just see. I wouldn't I wouldn't press it. Um, Mason Mason been waiting patiently, and he he gonna get another opportunity. So I just let Mason rock rock this thing out and see what we got. All right, Ike, speaking of injuries, Minka Fitzpatrick out with a knee injury, and I try to read the Tomlinisms when he meets with media members, and it sounds like he, Minka Fitzpatrick is going to be out for the foreseeable future. Definitely will miss the Bengals game with a knee injury. Um, what I wanted to ask you, Ike, is he hasn't been as much of a ball hawk this season in the turnover creation are the Steelers using Minka in a different way this season, or is it teams game planning for him? Just you don't see as many interceptions, the force fumbles being a magnet to the football this season. I was curious to see if you noticed any reasons why that might be. I mean, Mink, Mink been hurt. Um, Mink been playing a lot of positions, you know, one one game he might be at outside linebacker. The other game he might be at nickel. The other game he might be at strong. The other game he might be at free. So, you know, for me, Mink is a rhythm player. So Mink 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 is like a running back. Like a, Mink is like a Derrick Henry to me. You keep you keep feeding him the ball. He's gonna wind up breaking one. He got to get in the rhythm. For me, Mink been so he's been the Swiss Army knife. For that defense, I think it's just he's been doing everything, but it, it it's like everything been quiet. So he's still grading out one of the best um, grades for the team. 
he's still making plays. It's just not the splash plays. So really, Minka is kind of like, I ain't gonna say kind of. Minka is sacrificing his skills for the sake of the defense. That's that's what I want to say. So a lot of things that a lot of things that we're used to seeing with Minka is not getting unnoticed in that locker room for us, like from a defensive coordinator standpoint and a teammate standpoint. So, but when you got a guy like that, you know, you know, you can use him pretty much anywhere except for the defensive line on that defense. Um, a lot of things you're not going to see, but from a defensive coordinator, a coach and a teammate perspective, a lot of things he does um, doesn't get unnoticed. Yeah, you're right about the injuries. 10 games this season, uh, no interceptions, no forced fumbles, though, Ike, too. So it's like uh, coming off a year where he had six interceptions, too. So um, I hope he gets back healthy. I hope he gets back right. But also, uh, there's a glass half full and glass half empty. The glass half full, Ike, is that uh, the Bengals will also sit Jamar Chase with the shoulder injury. So you take away a dynamic playmaker from the Bengals standpoint. And then we got to talk about this DeMonte Kazee suspension, Ike, and the hit he had on Michael Pittman Jr. Now, for this game, it leaves the Steelers thin at the safety position because Trenton Thompson had an injury with the Stinger. Right, right, I'd imagine right. he'll play, but you don't have as much depth. I know they moved Patrick Peterson to the safety position. Uh, Eric Rowe could get into the mix. Miles Killebrew and see if the Steelers promote anyone else from the practice squad. But we talked about this several weeks ago about defensive players and how they're supposed to hit offensive players. And I think Tom Brady put it best on social media where the offensive players should at least bear some of the brunt of the responsibility. Like we talk about targeting and hitting defensive defenseless players and all this thing. Like I've never seen the NFL suspend an offensive player for dipping his head when a runner whether it's someone with a ball carrier is trying to run over a defensive player and what brady was saying is quarterbacks have to bear some responsibility in this case too it's not like i mean Pittman was diving for the ball casey didn't launch himself he led with his shoulder pad and it's just like i don't want to take away from a player's ability to read react and to play explosive and it's like if we're taking away their ability to do that, what what do you want them to do? You got a right now Hall of Fame and Tom Brady. I call him the statue defending Demonte Casey. So that's 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 letting you know Tom Tom could have went the other way with it mm -hmm. easily, but Tom came up in the era with with me where football football was being football is what I want to say. Now you ask Demonte Casey to to hold back or not hit like that. Demonte Casey, in my mind, did nothing wrong. Demonte Casey led with his shoulder. Demonte Casey, it technically, if you look at if you looking at it, he was trying to go for the ball. Pittman just stretched out and he just wound up getting caught and that kind of fire. So as a defender, I have to protect myself. And and how's that? I gotta be the aggressor at all times. If not, I'm gonna get hurt. But as Tom said, Brady, that is, when you're when you're when when you're a good quarterback, you understand ball placement. You understand protecting your wide receiver. You're understand you understand sometimes I gotta throw this ball, but I gotta throw it low, probably back shoulder, so he don't get hit. Sometimes you understand like I gotta throw it, but I gotta throw it to the dirt. Um, because he, I see the defender coming and he don't, I got to protect his body. So when you're good, when you're a good quarterback, like Tom, Tom, Tom understands every throw I'm throwing the ball to protect my receiver, especially in crucial situations. So when, when you, when you, when you snap the ball and you see a cover four, cover three, cover two, and you know, the weaknesses to them, to them defenses, mm -hmm. But you know the angles the safeties and the cornerbacks or linebackers need to take. You just know where you need to throw the ball at in protection of the wide receiver. And Tom, Tom don't say nothing at all. So for Tom to defend 
A. Stiller, DeMonte Casey, safety, says a lot. One time was watching the game. Two, he probably just had enough of, dang, let the defenders play, you know, especially when DeMonte checked all the boxes, Mark. He didn't leave with his head. Mm -hmm. And he hit he he hit Pittman with his with his uh with his shoulder pad. So it's like if I'm Demonte Cage, like what else y'all want me to do? Like I'm 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 going by the book. Demonte always been violent. Always. That's what I love about him. But as he as he's tackling, he's adjusted and he's going by the book and he still gets punished. Yeah, and Ike, at the time of this recording, we don't know the outcome of his appeal with the NFL. Correct. Um, he's been previously fined five times this season for unnecessary roughness violations, but when you're also taking away his salary, too, uh, for the remainder of the season, Ike, it's just crazy, like... Bro. I, I see a lot of people, I, I don't always look on social media, but when I see a lot of people that no ball are saying that this is absolute bogus, we'll see what the league decides in its appeal um, or in Casey's appeal. But like I said, like I don't want them then playing timid to where either he gets hurt, worst case scenario, or you know, he, he's not making a play that he needs to play. And he's a, can be a dynamic playmaker at times. So it's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And a lot of regards, Ike, and it's just like, I, I don't know what you want him to do in some of those scenarios where he's simply just trying to make a play. Man, that's all that man trying to do, bro. Make a play. Um, I mean, Pittman just got caught diving. When he dove, it's like, he when you dive, you kind of are defenseless. So he, but Pitton was just trying to make a play too. He was trying to make a play on the ball. Demonte mm -hmm. was trying to play, make a play on the ball. They just got called in that friendly five. Yeah. So for the time being, it'll leave the Steelers thin at the safety position. Even if his appeal is granted, Ike, and it's not a season long suspension, I doubt he plays Saturday against the Bengals. So right. we'll see how all that unfolds. Um, I, I don't know the best way to ask this uh, to you. Uh, George Pickens' effort, the two plays I'm talking about against the Colts where uh -huh. Jalen Warren is scrapping for a touchdown to try to score in the red zone. He stops blocking his defensive back. And then uh, Mitch Trubisky's last interception where he starts to jog after the defender and then just starts jogging at midfield. I remember a few years ago when OBJ was on the Browns and he tore his ACL trying to chase after a defender who intercepted Baker Mayfield. Um, at the same time, watching these reps on film are really, really difficult. Um, I take this in any direction you'd like, but I have to ask you about this is when you see this as a player, just like what comes to your mind when you see those two reps on film? Oh, um, bro, you tripping. That's how I look at it. Like, cause th that, that, that for sure ain't you. I, I know, I know the George Pickens. I know the George Pickens when I watch on tape, when he get him between them lines, ain't no such thing as no effort. That, that's what I do know. So, Don't let don't let that leak in. I'm I'm talking to George. George, don't let that leak into your game, bro. Don't even let don't even let don't don't even put that on tape because that ain't you. For for sure that ain't you. Like George, I don't know if you know, but you're a leader, so it's time for you to start acting like a leader. Mm -hmm. I know you probably I, I know you probably don't want to be a leader, but off of default, your talent, your production, what you can do how other how other defenses look and value you and i'm just going to tell you this from the get-go george you a leader bro so let's start acting like one i mean and you ain't you ain't got to talk because you're not a talkative person what you do on the field shows that you're a leader and 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 a lot of that comes with and this ain't got nothing to do with catching because everybody know your catch radius is off the charts everybody know all you need is a couple of targets a game and you're going to make a play or score a touchdown. Everybody know that, George. 
Everybody know that. But the effort part, don't let that leak into your game, bro. I, I don't think you understand how many people uh, look up to you, and I don't think you understand how important you is to the organization. So, GP, let's not put this on tape. Um, ain't nobody asking you to be vocal when it comes down to leadership, but I'm telling, I'm telling you this off of what I see, GP. You a leader, so let's start acting like a leader. Like that's very well said, and uh, you see a lot of clips where he's abusing defenders, not just catching the ball, but blocking in the past too, and um, just tough to watch. I get it; it's late in the season, your team's struggling, you're now on the outside looking in for the playoffs. I, I understand all of that, right? But I don't, I lack, don't. lack you of are, effort. You are what you are on tape. Yeah, your, your, your tape. Your tape is your resume. So, like you've said that you've said that slogan since we started doing you know this show in 2019. Effort should never be questioned if you a football player, regardless. So you, you're not gonna you're not gonna know whether we're six and eleven or eleven and six off of my effort, just off of effort. So and 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 that's since I hit the front office, that's exactly what I look for. How how does a receiver do the how does a receiver block? You know, um, because he's not getting the ball. So how he gonna block for his teammates? Um, how do a running back pick up the blitz because he's not getting the ball? So he got he gonna sacrifice for his team. Um, how does a how does a corner come downhill and 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 tackle a 215 pound running back, but that's not part of his 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 uh his resume. He's just not on the cover. Like it's just a lot of unselfishness, bro. To be to be to be honest with you, Mark. So I mean, I, I don't think I see this again coming from GP. As far as like effort wise, but effort ain't got nothing to do with record. Ever. Yeah, like the energy that I think he can bring and is capable of bringing, if that's channeled and harnessed the right way, it it's a scary combination. It's a chocolate and peanut butter combination where one right. plus one equals three. How he responds is what I'm looking at, Ike, because we've seen this before with other talented Steelers receivers, Chase Claypool, Antonio Brown, like different circumstances I understand, but to where there's some drama and everything. Go let your tape and, and go showcase your athletic excellence in these last three games. How you respond to this of, hey, here's what I'm capable of doing when I'm getting the ball, when I'm not getting the ball. And he has that opportunity really starting Saturday against a division opponent where you have to win out and you're going to need help if you want any chance of making the playoffs. From his talent standpoint, I have no doubt in my mind that he could do it. And here's the thing, too, is there's already people on social media saying, oh, well, they need to trade him now. And there's others saying, well, he wouldn't have value. I think there are a lot of teams that would want to have George Pickens on their team, given what he can do with the football in his hands, Ike. So it, it you're <laughs> you're holding your eyes at me. But what we're saying is true. He, my, my point is this. He has the opportunity of how he responds to adversity come Saturday and I'm excited to watch that. I really am. Man, nobody trading GP, man. That dude, the alien, bro. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't nobody trade. GP will have a 31 waiting list, a 31 team waiting list. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody. Yo, don't, you don't trade. He ain't, he ain't from around here, bro. It, it really, he ain't do, he ain't do nothing wrong. Like GP, for me, with GP is just a maturity. It, GP don't do. I, I know when GP step in between them two lines for practice. I've been up there for two weeks. That that he it's just off of them two play. I guarantee it won't happen again. Off of them two plays is just like that a mental a mental lapse. But that ain't him. So I'm not worrying about it. Mm. Uh, th th that ain't what, I, that to hear ain't you what say he that you went against everyone. I know you were there for practices. I know you were there during training camp. When you say he's an alien, I've gone up and down the your resume of who you covered. So when I hear you say that, and if someone's watching this and be like, 
What's Ike Taylor talking about with George Pickens? Ike went against everybody. Go look at his resume, 03 to 2014. Every receiver that played in the league, you went against. Period. Right. Yeah, G and GP alien, bro. Yeah. He he all the way, he all the way. Ain't no, ain't nobody, ain't nobody trading. And he ain't even do nothing. Like they like, okay, nine effort on a couple of plays. But that that's that's not his personality when he stepped in the line. That ain't him. So I also it, think that's it, magnified it, during a loss, Ike. Yeah. If that's it, a win, it, if that's a win, we're not even talking about this segment right now. Let's be honest with ourselves. Right. Agree. But that ain't that ain't him, bro. I'm yeah. I'm not worrying about GP. We're gonna end on a bright note. It's the holiday season. We're a few days out from Christmas. You're hosting right. a Christmas party in Orlando. Let right. me pull this right. up for our listeners right. and viewers. Uh, right. Thursday in Orlando, Ike. You can take this away. Uh, I've got the graphic up here on the screen right now. Man, the, Thursday, uh, Orlando, 8 p.m. to 2. And, you know, make sure y'all come check out this uh this Christmas party, man. Orlando been asking me to do something for, for years. I said, you know what? Now is the time, Mark. So this is this is this is what we're doing. Um come check us out. Got my homegirl cast and myself gonna be hosting. Got Bo Weezy, my DJ, been knowing Bo Weezy for years. Uh, he's certified Florida legend when it comes down to it. Uh, it's going to be at Makani on Alpha of International in Orlando. Come, I'm telling you, man, dress to women. Dress to impress. <laughs> Fellas, open your wallet up. $10 dough charge. After that, we'll talk about tables, RSVP. Um, but, man, it's, it's, I mean, Mark, it's... My phone has been blowing, and it's like a 48-hour notice. <laughs> but my phone has been blowing up about it. So I, I can't wait, man. That, for me, I just like to see, I just like to see people happy. And I think it's it's just gonna be a good change up. Um sponsored by Howard G Cigars. And you know what I mean, how how we get together. It's a wrap. So yeah, this 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 what this what we're doing, bro. This this is this is exactly what we're doing. We I'm 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 going down here with no breaks in 2024. I told myself I'm gonna be selfish. I told myself, man, my son's straight, my mom is straight, his mom's straight, my sister's good. It's time for me to start having fun for me. I, I've always had the mentality of we because of football, what we doing. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mama told me for Thanksgiving, you need to start having fun for Ike because you deserve it. So this what I'm doing. I'm I'm hitting 2024, but starting in 2023, 20, hitting the ground running with no breaks. That's the way to do it, Ike, because I think New Year's resolutions are just bogus. All right, well, that's, listen, we will wrap, Ike. I will wrap up the show. For Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for watching Believe in Steelers. We will be back next week recapping Steelers and Bengals. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. So long, everybody.